Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I really don't. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask you to stand for just a moment. I've got some scriptures I want to read. Of course, you know, Tim was here just a few weeks ago, and uh, he brought a tremendous message. And so... Uh, I have to start doing what the young ones do. And that's when we read scripture, we stand. And I don't think it's a bad thing, do you? Amen. So we're going to read a few scriptures. First one is Acts chapter 2, verse 38 to 39. Then Peter said to them, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. I want you to notice this verse of scripture in the book of Acts. This is when the church of Jesus Christ was birthed. This is the very first message that was preached. Those people responded to it were the ones who were the first in the body of Christ. It was birthed at that moment. But I want you to notice there are three things. He says, first of all, repent. Every one of you. Then he says, be baptized. That's in water. And that's where most people end today. And it is a tragedy in the kingdom of God. Because the third thing he says, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's he's going to pour out his Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will have visions. This is for us and for those who are yet to come. Matthew 3, 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, I I know there are some people who say, where's the fire? The fire was there on the day of Pentecost. When the Spirit came, there were cloven tongues of fire hanging over them. John 7, He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Ephesians chapter 5, he says, don't be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Zechariah 4, 6, he says, So he answered and said to me, This is what the Lord says to you, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Acts chapter chapter 1, verse 8, But you shall receive power, dunamis, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, to be, to be, My witnesses in Jerusalem, there where you live, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world, you will receive power to be my witnesses. God bless you. You may be seated. 
Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. Your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Entrance of your word gives understanding to the simple. We thank you that you have already declared that heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. And your word reveals us, reveals you to us. We get to know you better through your word. And so we pray your anointing upon your word this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of John, John writes about spirits. He says, don't believe every spirit. Because there are a lot of spirits today that are deceiving people. Then he says, there is also the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit of that individual, that being that's anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti the Holy Spirit, anti the Bible, anti. He says, that spirit is already in the world. He wrote that a long time ago. And said that spirit is already in the world. And we see that spirit in the world today. It is more visible than it has ever been. When I got saved and born again and became part of the church, some of the old timers used to pray and speak about certain elements of evil. And I thought, where was this going to come from? And here today... We can see all those things coming to pass. There are scoffers who will say, where is the sign of his coming? Those scoffers are not people on the outside. They're not people that are ignorant of the scriptures. They are not people who are blind to the word of God. The scoffers are coming from inside. The lukewarm believers or Christians... Those who stand with one foot in in the church and one foot in the world. Those who don't know whether they're coming or going. They want to pick and choose what they believe. They want to pick and choose what they accept from God's word. But you can have any attitude that you want to have. You can believe whatsoever you want to. The Bible has proved itself over and over and over to be the truth of God. Jesus is coming back. Why is there so much evil today that even people on television speak about people being possessed with demons? The church is not talking much about it. We're too busy with our program. There's too much... much, uh, Tickling ears today. Too much trying to please people. We must change the atmosphere. We must change everything we do so we can draw people and please them. Not one scripture says that I have the responsibility to please anybody. I have a responsibility to please him who has redeemed me who's washed me clean in his precious blood, and that is Jesus himself. Amen. But that spirit is visible. And I think there are many sitting in church that don't understand the purpose and the plan of the spirit of the Antichrist. This spirit that is active right at this moment, his main goal is to rid the world of God. He wants to remove, he wants to eradicate everything pertaining to God from this world. That's why there's lawlessness. It's only the beginning. That's why we look at people who are in high positions, whether it's in the education department, whether it's in in the courts, No matter where, they are foolish. They are propagating stuff that don't make sense. (laughs) 
It's the Antichrist spirit. And this, this is the time for the church to be, begin to prepare itself for spiritual warfare. It's no more picking and choosing what you like and what you don't like. You are called to stand. Tim preached a great message the other day, like I said, and he spoke about the three Jewish boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shake your bed, make your bed, and bed you go. (laughs) And the king said, everybody must bow in the kingdom to my image. And it says they refused. Three young, ordinary men. They didn't have their collars back to front. They didn't have their degrees under their arms. But they had faith and trust in the living God. And this is what they said. First of all, they heat up that furnace seven times hotter than it's ever been. Now, I, I don't know what it feels like when you or threatened to be thrown into a fire. It must be a terrible thing. But they said, we will not bow, O king. Our God is able to deliver us. But, but, if not, we still will not bow. That's faith. What happens to faith like that? Faith like that draws the presence of the Son of God. Because when they looked in the furnace, they said, we put three men in here, and now there's four. Where did the fourth one come from? He's like unto the Son of God. Jesus was with them in the fire. I want to tell you this morning, the fire is going to burn all around us. We have to stand. He's promised us that when we go through the fire, we will not burn. And I want to guarantee you, when you stand up for the truth, you stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ, you may be thrown into the furnace, but when your spiritual eyes are open, you will see the fourth man is there. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're living It's not a time for people to run around and look for conspiracies and try and find the answers uh, about everything that's going. No! It's time for you and I to prepare ourselves. That's our first responsibility. There are people that are quoting the Bible back to front. They're watching this program, that program, the other program. They're listening to every conspiracy and they're talking about the Armageddon and they're talking about the Antichrist, but they're running around and they're unprepared. To meet with the Lord. He that has this hope purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Amen. And so I thought, what, what is the most important thing right now? And, and I mentioned spiritual warfare. But, but what's the most important thing? I want to tell you, it is something that has been neglected. And I guarantee there's a large portion of you here this morning, although we've spoken about it, you don't really understand it. And that is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I know there are many churches this morning that are preaching against it. They won't stand. You and I won't stand unless we get filled with God's Spirit. And there's an ongoing experience of being filled. He says, be ye filled. And not be drunk with wine. But be filled with the Spirit. Singing to yourself. Who sings to himself? Drunk people. (laughs) But he says, don't get drunk with wine. Why do drunk people sing? Because when they drink alcohol, it gives them a sense of joy. It makes them bigger than life. More handsome than anyone else. Richer than the richest. And they begin to sing, walk past the bar, and you, you find people singing. Because it gives them a false joy. Now he's telling us that kind of joy doesn't last. When it wears off, you find yourself in the gutter. Broke, bound, blind, and suffering. 
But it says you should have another joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it's the Holy Spirit in you. Singing to yourself in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. I want to speak this Sunday, next Sunday, and the Sunday after short messages on the infilling of the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, and, and let me say this this morning, I am thoroughly convinced that before Jesus comes back, the church is once again going to go back to its roots. You see, our future is in the past. There's no future if we don't understand the past. There's no future if we don't build on the foundation of the past. The foundations have been laid. There's no generation coming that's going to lay a new foundation. It is already laid. And Jesus himself is that foundation. This passage of scripture, I read to you, repent, be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is still relevant this morning. You have to repent. I watched a program on YouTube the other day and they showed 20 famous people in America and they're young who claim to be Christians. But look at their behavior. It contradicts the Christian way of life. Immoral, sleeping around, getting drunk, having drugs. Anti-everything. It's, it's not right. There's no repentance. People, people don't want to hear the message of repentance. Right. We have to repent. Yes. Be baptized in water. I watched the baptism just the other day. When the man came up out of the water, he said, I... Oh, I thank God for washing away my sins in the water. Man, water can't wash away your sin. You could buy hubbly, bubbly, bubbly, hubbly, and you can put it all in that water. That water ain't going to wash away your sin. You can shower 10 times a day. It will not take away your sin. You can drink every kind of tablet that they will recommend to you. You cannot take away your sin. There's only one remedy, and it is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus, Stephen, and Barnabas in the New Testament. Whenever you read of them, it says, and full of the Holy Spirit. Not of anyone else, only those three. Jesus was persecuted, but he stood. He was rejected, he was despised, but he stood. Stephen was stoned to death. They stoned him just because of his testimony. But he was full of the Holy Spirit. And when he looked up, he saw Jesus standing. Now, to you, it might, to some people, it might not mean much. But you see, the Bible says when Jesus ascended to heaven, he went and sat down at the right-hand side of God the Father. That is his position of authority and power. He's coming back from that position on the right-hand side of God the Father. He's our intercessor, so he's seated. But here when it says Stephen was stoned to death, it says Jesus was standing. Why did he stand? He stand to receive that man full of the Holy Ghost. He stood. Let me tell you something. We need to be filled with the Spirit. And we need not start worrying about what sounds come out. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers, living water. In order for us to get to that place in the New Testament. And, and, a, and a great example, I have to go back to the Old Covenant. Because there's something 
that I, I know there are people that don't understand. They, they, they're always speaking about, oh, you know, that guy, he preaches negative stuff. Or that guy, not me, someone else. <laughs> they preach negative stuff. I don't want to hear negative. A man told me I don't want to hear negative stuff. I want to hear good stuff so I can feel good. You see? But the Bible is not like that. Did you know God exposes his people's faults? Read the Old Testament. They've done some bad things. He doesn't cover it up. Why? God, God could have come. God didn't have, I'm going to talk a little bit about Samson. God didn't have to tell us anything about Samson. He could have said Samson was the judge and Samson was the deliverer in Israel. That could have been the end of it. And you and I would know nothing more about Samson except that. But he messed up. He messed up. And God shows us he messed up. Why? For our care. So that we don't make the same mistake. And I think the story of Samson is not just a story for individuals. To be quite honest with you this morning, I think that's where the church is. And I'm going to show you some things from Samson. Samson... The Bible tells us the angel came to a man by the name of Manoah. Now, Manoah's wife was barren. She couldn't have a child. And the angel said, you're going to have a son. And there's certain things he must not do, and there's certain things you must not do, the mother. You mustn't eat the fruit of a vine. You mustn't drink. You mustn't touch dead stuff. Because this child that's going to be born to you is going to be a deliverer of Israel. Now, now right in the very beginning, there's a, 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 it says that she had the son. They called him Samson. His, he, his birth was a miracle. Because his mother was barren. And I want to tell you something. We've prayed for a couple of people that were barren and God blessed them with children. But this man is born for a purpose. What you've got to understand about the Old Testament, I know there's some big preachers now that want to get, get away from the Old Testament altogether. In fact, they're going to get away from the Word of God. But we learn from the Old Testament many things that are important. He's going to begin to deliver God's people from the Philistines. Now let me read a verse of scripture in Judges 13 verse 1. It says this, the children of Israel. Now the children of Israel were like we are this morning. We're the children of God. They were the children of God in that time. Okay? It says they did evil. The children of God. In the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines. They did evil. What did they do? They forgot the blessings. They forgot the blessings of the past. They forgot the God that they serve. He's the one that opened the Red Sea, that fed the manna from heaven. They forgot about that God. And so they turned to the idols of the nations. And they begin to worship idols. These are the children of God. And God looks at them and he says, this is not good. And so he lifts his hand of protection and he allows the Philistines to come in and to take them captive. It's over and over in the Old Testament. And then you find them in captivity and then they cry, Oh Lord, oh Lord, we're sorry, oh Lord. And then the Lord delivers them. That's what happened. They were in bondage. And that's what can happen to the church and is happening to the church. We've turned from the living God and we're worshiping idols. This is a country where every nation can bring in its idol. Our country is polluted with idols. But the worst idols are things that are involved with the American dream. There are things here that we worship. They come before God. And it's idolatry. What's going on in the church today? 
Come on, we've got to be honest this morning. You can get mad with me. I won't be cross with you. People are worshiping stars in the church. Stars in the church. Church is full of stars. People who are better than other people can sing better and preach better and do all. And people flock to one. Listen to these people that they put on pedestals. And be quite honest, it's worship. We can't worship man. Idolatry has crept into the church. The culture has crept into the church. People say, I've got to uphold my culture. No, when you're born again, God gives you a new culture. Amen. We live according to this book and no one else's book. It's time that you and I, me, I'm just as bad as everybody else. We're not letting everything that's happening around us affect us. And I'm going to prophesy to you this morning that in the next couple of years, you're going to see big preachers bend the knee to the culture. They're going to agree on all this stuff that's an abomination in the sight of God. They're already doing it, by the way. There's a very famous preacher right now has thousands and thousands of people in his church. He's already bowed the knee. And they come like they, they clever and they, they try and work it and, and twist the scriptures. I, I heard someone say, and, and they must have picked it up by some other preacher, who, who said the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah was not what we think it is. It was greed. I can't find that. I can't find that. Listen, we, 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 we've got to believe the Bible. You see, I'm not going to be judged by the, 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 the uh, Democrats' book or the GOP's book, whatever book they've got. I'm going to be judged by God's Word. Amen? And so we've got to stand up for the truth and we've got to understand the time in which we're living. I know many of us, we go to our workplaces and the pressure's on and we're giving in. You know what we can do? We can say, look, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'll do it. If I say, look, you've got to lift your hands to this idol. I know many of us will say, yes, no, I, I'll do it. But in my heart, I don't really do it. <laughs> you know, you know that thing. We, we know how to con our ways out. But we'd be like Samson. Sometimes I think the church is like Samson. When we look at the history of the church and we saw the mighty works of our God, that most people sitting in church this morning don't believe in miracles. Because there's a lot of scams going on in the church. A lot of people that are fooling around with the Holy Spirit. And we're going to come to that. They're fooling around with the Holy Spirit. And I wonder if God hasn't just given them over to the Philistines. Our churches are full of Philistines. Not there to get saved, but running the church. I'm telling you, people are being raised up in the church. They are Philistines. They've never had an experience with Jesus Christ. And they get into positions in the churches because of their gifts, whether it's to be a worship leader or anything else. And what does it do? It drowns us. It robs us of that which is true and precious. Spirituality has flown out the windows because the church has become a big show. Come and enjoy our show. That's not what it should be. Should be men and women filled with the Holy Spirit. Who go down to Norwood, who go down to Walpole, who go down to Franklin, who go down everywhere and make a change where they work and where they live. That's what the Holy Spirit does. So his his birth was a miracle. And uh, the Old Testament is a shadow of what is yet to come. You see... It's a shadow. It's not the real deal. Samson was a shadow, a deliverer of the one true deliverer, deliverer who was yet to come, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. Can I tell you what Jesus occupied his time with? I'll tell you in three weeks. (laughs) Deliverer, he's a deliverer. And his name was Samson. The Bible says, and the child grew and the Lord blessed him. God blessed him. All the days of, he was growing up. And then it says in verse 25, and the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan. 
God raises up this man. That's what God does. God will never tell you to do something and not equip you to do it. Are you with me? So he equips this man. Man has the Holy Spirit coming upon him and he does great things. And it begins to move him and he does certain things. Now, he was a man who was a Nazarite. A Nazarite is not somebody who comes from Nazareth. The people who came from Nazareth were Nazarenes. But he was a Nazarite. Nazarites were a group of people who committed themselves totally to the Lord. And there were several things that a, a Nazarite was not allowed to do. He had to make a vow. And the vow was that he will not drink strong drink. He will not drink wine or eat the fruit of the, of the vine. He made a vow that he will not touch anything that is dead. He made a vow that he will never cut his hair. And he made a vow also that he will never marry outside of his people. Four vows. That's what Samson made. And that's what made him a Nazarite. And then we see in the Bible one day he's going somewhere and a lion roars against him. Now most of us have only seen lions in the movies or on TV. Isn't that so? Am I right? Yeah. Somebody speak to me. Now I come from South Africa. Lots of lions. And I just bought myself a brand new Ferenza, Chevrolet Ferenza. Nice brand new little car. First brand new car I've ever bought. And I think it's the last one too. <laughs> I said to my wife, let us go to the lion park. So as I drive and I drive into the lion park, my car gets bombarded with a whole bunch of monkeys. <laughs> they jump all over my car and they pull out that little rubber thing on your hood where the water sprays to clean your windows. Out, brand new car. So I saw a man sitting there. And I knew he works. And so I said, listen, the monkey stole something from my car. So he said, what? I said, that, that little thing on my hood. So he goes somewhere and he comes back and he's got a whole handful. <laughs> so he, he gave it back, gave me one back anyway. But anyway, my wife and I are driving and there's lions all around you. I said, dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> dear Lord Jesus, never again. Help me just get out of here right now. My, I, woo, have you ever seen a lion? Big. Whoa. When it roars, I can feel a car going like that. Man, I was scared. I thought to myself, you know what? Say now this lion just comes up to my car and goes like that and my windscreen is gone. Where do I go? Down his belly. <laughs> Scary. Scary. Yet Samson. As the Spirit of God comes upon him, he kills a lion with his bare hands. Bare hands. And he doesn't even brag about it. Because he didn't go and tell his mother and father that he killed the lion. Not only that, he does several things. He, 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 he gives a riddle and uh, the, the people he gives a riddle to get the riddle out of his uh, to be wife or wife. And Samson gets mad. He goes down to Ashkelon, he kills 30 men, and takes their garments and comes and gives it to these people. So things like that happened. One time he went to his wife and uh, the father-in-law said, I, we, I don't know where you were, so I gave your wife to someone else. That would make any guy mad. <laughs> and Samson was mad. So he rounds up 300 foxes, he ties their tails together, puts a fiery torch between them, and he sends them into the corner of the Philistines and burns down their cornfields. Amazing man. Another time it says he, he was upset because they burnt his wife and, and his father-in-law to death. The Bible says there was a great slaughter. This is Samson. As the Spirit of God moves upon him. Another time it says he slew a thousand men with a jawbone of an ass. Think about it. Think about it for a moment. Samson against a thousand trained soldiers. Probably in uniform. Probably with their armor. He kills a thousand with a jawbone of an ass because the Spirit of the Lord had come upon him. He breaks the cords that they tie him with when his wife tried to get him caught. He breaks it, breaks loose. 
He pulls out the Duke, the city gate. Have you ever seen in the movies how big those cities' gates were? He pulled it out. He put it on a mountain. Because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Afterwards, he gets involved with a woman called Delilah. Delilah says to him, Samson, she made a pact with the Philistines. I'm going to find out what his secret is, and I'm going to tell you, and you're going to capture him. And so she says, Samson, what is, where do you get the strength? And he tells her some story. So when she's with him and he's drinking and he's partying, he, 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 he sleeps on her lap. And she calls the Philistines. They come. She says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And Samson gets up. And he beats them up and he breaks what they tried to time with because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. He did it about three, four times like it. Then he told her the truth. If they cut off my hair, I will lose my strength. And so they cut his hair off. And she says, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. And the Bible says he stood up and he said, I will do what I've always done. But he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord had departed from him. He did not know. And what happened in the church? You see, Galatians speaks about it. He says, to the, when Paul writes to the Galatian church, what's wrong with you? I've given you the true gospel. Now you're preaching another gospel. And he says, it's not another gospel, it's a false gospel. He rebukes uh, the, the church in Galatia. What did they do? You know what they did? They took the plain, simple gospel, and they added circumcision of the flesh. That's all they did. You would say, what's that? God wants his word pure and to remain pure. Yes. And he rebukes him. He says, you have started off in the spirit and you're ending up in the flesh. That's what happened to Samson. He started off in the spirit. The spirit moved upon him and he was killing full the stars. He's fulfilling God's plan and God's purpose. But then he was messing around because he goes back to the lion. The lion is dead. He takes honey out of the lion. He, 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 he breaks his back because he touches a dead body. He messes around with prostitutes. Marries outside of his group. Drinks wine. Samson didn't break one vow. He broke all of them. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says if... You make a vow unto God, and you break that vow. God does not delight in fools. Oh, I've got to say that again. Did you hear that? How many times don't you and I consecrate ourselves to God, make promises to God? That's a vow. And then we go, we do the opposite. I mean, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I have to say, God, please forgive me. Because every now and again we get moved a little bit. And then we do things we don't carry through. So Samson broke his vows. What happened? The Spirit of the Lord departed from him. And now this man who was, the, was going to deliver Israel from the Philistines, the children of God, now he, they take his eyes out. He's blind. He can't see. He's bound. And he's grinding in the prison house. He's doing the work of an ox. Blind, bound, grinding in the prison house. He started off in a spirit, he ends in the flesh. Folk, that's where the flesh takes us. Every single time when you start changing spiritual things for carnal things, fleshy things, that's what happens. It blinds you. I knew preachers that could speak about immorality and adultery and fornication because God's word says it. Then they get involved in it and then down the road they say there's nothing wrong with it. Why? Because they've been blinded. Their eyes have been taken out. And that's why there's such a lukewarm message in the church today because most are blind. Blind. We've been fooling around with the things of God. And the worst thing that a church can do is fool around with the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about years now, years when I've heard people, how they criticize, how they lie, and how they laugh at the things of the Spirit just because it's something that they are not used to. 
I said to someone one day, how can you say, well, that is strange, that's stranger, that can't be God. Let me tell you what Jesus did. He met a man who was blind, and he spat. He spat in the sand, and he picked up the mud and put it on a man's eyes. What would, you, what would the church do today if you saw that? Whoa, that's not of God. Come on now. That's not of God. That's rude. Jesus did it. Now, I can show you many scriptures. When the power of God comes, people can't stand. It's an Old, Old Testament thing. The priest could not stand when the glory of the Lord comes down. It happens in the New Testament, and it happens in the church today. But unfortunately, what do we have? We have a lot of blind people leading, pushing. I watched the guy the other day. And by the way, this is the next big, big, big church that's going to be in big trouble. It's coming. I'm not going to mention their name. But they, they, they're all pushing the people down. Why you push people down? When it's got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. I believe people can fall down. I've, we have it here many times. But let the, let the Holy Spirit do it. Don't, he doesn't need your help or my help. And now the world looks at us and they laugh and they say, these fools, look what they're doing. Scamming. I had a preacher speak the other day and he, and he says that uh, him and God had a discussion and afterwards God said to him, he's right. God made a mistake. This is a garbage. Come on, you've got to know these things because you can't be sucked in to the seducing spirit of our time. You can't be caught up with these people who are, do not have God's people at heart, but only themselves. They are selfish, self-centered. I saw one man boasting about he's got three airplanes, three planes. He's a preacher. Why does he need three? Boasting, bragging. This is the blessing of God. God blessed Abraham, he'll bless me. But where do they get the money? They get it from poor people sitting in the pews. And nobody's got the guts to speak out against these people. I want to tell you something. I believe in the whole counsel of God. I will speak about the move of the Spirit. Strange things will happen. I will stand up for it. But I will not stand up for the deceit that we see today. Bishops are doing strange stuff. It's not, not biblical. It's not spiritual. And it's not the Holy Ghost. And this is what's happening today. It's going to get worse and worse and worse before Jesus comes back. You know what they said about Samson? It says they, all those people, the Philistines, gathered in their big arena. And they said, where's Samson? Bring Samson that he may make sport for us. This is the man. Under the anointing of God's spirit, he brought horror and terror and fear into the hearts of God's enemies. Now he's a clown. A fool. What did I say to you just now? To make a vow to the Lord and you break that vow. God does not delight in fools. Samson's a fool. They're laughing at him. They're jeering at him. Fortunately, there's a little boy. They asked a little boy to take him to the two pillars of that massive arena. And listen to this. He's standing there. He's got no more strength. His hair's cut. And he says, Lord, Remember me this one more time. Not that I can fulfill your will. Not that the purpose you sent me for can be completed. No, he doesn't say that. He says, hey, Lord, give me my strength back one more time that I may take avenge for my eyes. Sammy! It's all about Sammy! Every time the Spirit of God moved upon him, Sammy used it for his own glory, for his own purpose. He forgot about the purpose of God, but God still used that to complete his own purpose. It's all about him. Broke every vow, touched the dead thing, got drunk. But he did not know that the Spirit of the Lord had departed The last number of years, I've gone and listened to a lot of ministry. Guys get up and preach. Half a dozen jokes. Three quarters of the time is about them. The buildings they're putting up. And a little bit of the word. 
And I don't sense any anointing. I don't sense any anointing. Where, where are those people that will stand up and say, God, I am nothing. I am nothing. You saved me by grace and grace alone. I was in the streets. I was in the gutters. I was dirty mouth. I did dirty things and you rescued me. And you put me here. And without you, I can do nothing. God's grace. Samson prays. God gives him his drink back pulls down those buildings and kills more people at his death than he did all his life. He killed more people at his death than all his life. Samson did great things. I want to say to you this morning, many of us are 30, 40, 50 years old, 60. But in many years gone by, God moved in power. In churches. Blind eyes were opened. Deaf ears unstopped. The lame began to walk. The men and women used to cry as they fall under the power of God. Nobody could doubt that God was in the midst of his people. And I'm going to tell you something. It was groups of people that were ordinary that were poor, that had experienced his grace. And that's where he performed his miracles. Somehow, many of us today think the bigger the church, the bigger the anointing. The better known the pastor, the greater the anointing. No, no, no. No. Jesus never went to the big places. Went to the ordinary people. We've got a record of the power of God. It's an unblemished record. You can shout. You can sing. You can scream. You can do whatever you like. But you will never erase God's word of the miraculous things he did. The Bible says to me he has not changed. So if he has not changed, if we don't see what happened in the New Testament when the power of God came upon them and they all spoke with one language and everybody heard the wonderful things of God in their own language, if God doesn't do that anymore, what's wrong? He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. We've changed. We've changed. I want to say to you this morning, anybody, any movement, any denomination, any individual that has an attitude towards the Holy Spirit or neglects Him or rejects Him or any movement that does not make room for Him will end up like Samson. Blind, blind to sin, bound and grinding at the prison house. Be not drunk with wine. But be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But peace. Righteousness. And joy. In the Holy Ghost. What's going to happen when we're filled with the Spirit? The peace of God going to flood our souls we come here on a Sunday morning and you've been through the fire but it did nothing to you because you're full of the Holy Spirit what's going to happen here the joy of the Lord it's going to flow here like a river that someone who does not know God and is still in darkness will say wow what's going on here we can say, it's not us. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. I'm challenging the next three weeks, every Sunday, to say, yes, I want to be filled with the Spirit. I'm not interested in your Baptist teaching. I'm not interested in your 
Nazarene teaching, or your teaching you get from anyone else. I'm not interested. All I'm interested in is what does the word say? Right. Be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Every one of you. Yes. So that we can stand. Having done all, stand. Stand. Hallelujah. I close. Time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Closing with this, so don't worry. I feel terrible to tell you this, but I have to. I consider myself guilty before God for lots of things. And one of the things that I've stopped warning people, trying to be Mr. Nice Guy, people are doing all kinds of stuff with things in our churches, and I can see it. Unspiritual, unspiritual. But there are no prophets will correct that stuff say you can't do that some of some of us serve God just the way we think it's the way to serve him we don't listen to God we've made commitments and vows and we've broken them and I'm telling you we can't do that we'll lose and end up empty sometimes we're weak and we make a promise and we can't keep it God will help us Amen. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I can't just preach it. That that is the that is that is that is the biggest joke of the lot. We preach it and we don't make room for it. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. Now I know there's some 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 folk here this morning. I know there's some people here this morning. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, and I'm not expecting anything from you. You don't even have to stand. You can remain seated if you want to. But if you haven't given your life to Jesus, I'm going to ask you today to do it. Right there where you're standing. That you can do in your heart. You can say, Lord, forgive me of all my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus will come in. and Your life will change. That will be the proof of what happened to you. If a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away. Everything becomes new. So you can do that. But for those of us who have already done that, we're in Christ. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him to play and sing in between. And I want you just to worship the Lord. For if you have to go, please, you don't, I, we're not a cult. We don't tell you to stand and sit and go. Do as you please, okay? But for those of us that want to, as he plays and sings, let's ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And if you feel something coming, from your innermost being, we want to sing a song. Just sing it where you are. Don't worry about your neighbor. I'll deal with them. <laughs> Just sing a song. Make melody in your heart. Or you want to praise him out aloud. Praise. Praise him. Let life come from your innermost being this morning. Let it flow like a river in this place. We want to see the miracles. We're going to see it when we are filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I want you this morning... For those of you that need to repent and you want to repent, feel free to come and kneel here and ask the Lord to forgive. Just let's be free. Let the Spirit move. Let the Spirit do what He wants to do. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we pray this morning that as we gather as your church, we ask the Lord Jesus to come and to baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. Sometimes, Lord, we just do things because we've always done it but there's no fire burning in our hearts we pray Lord this morning that you will fill us so that we have passion for the kingdom and passion for the house and passion for the lost And so we're going to open our hearts and our lives to you this morning Jesus because you are the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and as we stand and we drink of that we pray that Lord you will fill us till overflowing that we begin to sing in the spirit and we begin to pray and worship in the Spirit as your Holy Spirit takes charge and control of us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. For those of you that are Christians, I want you to sing in the Spirit. Let's begin to bless the Lord.
begin to worship him this Thank morning. you for watching. We trust that the Word of God has blessed you, challenged you, and we ask you please to share and also to subscribe. Also, we are in five locations and you can look it up and you're welcome to attend any one of them at any time. God bless you.